I want to see you I want to see you Open the eyes of my heart, Lord Open the eyes of my heart Jesus name let's give the Lord a, a clap offering I said give the King of Kings a clap offering if you are take your seats thank you if you are unmarried and you are a member of this ministry and you've not Okay, let me put it this way. How many of you have read all my books on relationship? You've read all of them. How many of you have read How Single Mingle? Okay, how many of you have not read it? Wow. Okay, what was the other book on relationship I wrote? How to fall in love and not into trouble. How to fall in love and not fall into trouble. How many of you have read that? What else? Maximizing singlehood. How many of you have read that? But that was the first one. Okay. If you have not read all of these, it's important that you read it because people think that greatness comes by accident. It doesn't happen that way. The Bible says in Proverbs 30, 25, that the ants are not a strong people, but they prepare their meat in the summer. Proverbs 30, 25. The ants, they are not a strong people. But the reason the ant can bring down a building is because of preparation. Nobody gets greatness by accident. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 27, I think verse 6, that Jotham became mighty because he prepared his way before the Lord is God. So there is might that is hidden in preparation. Might is hidden in preparation. You know, knowing I was going to talk to you, I just scrambled a few things down and put down some things I know will help your life and be a blessing to you. But you must understand the place of preparation. You can't just get into marriage accidentally. You have to be prepared. For a glorious marriage, the marriage that would be honorable, 
So I want to just give us some level of wisdom today. You can target wisdom for singles if you need to give a title to the message. But when I'm done, you may change the title if you will. But just start with... <laughs> I'm going to touch, touch here and there, but wisdom for singles. Um, so you cannot um, enjoy anything. How I many of you know anything that has credibility as a manual? Are you aware? Are you aware? Anything that has credibility, the things that have no manuals are things you cannot, you, you, you cannot call them credible. If you buy anything that's credible, that the manufacturer is confident of what he has produced, he puts a manual. You know, there are people that tell you, like, forget it. This thing is just, it's just grace. There's no manual. It's laziness that makes you say that. Having a wonderful marriage and home is just grace. It's just luck. It's not luck. Even luck needs a manual. <laughs> when, you are, when you keep getting lucky all the time, there is a manual. Even luck needs a manual. So, it's important that you understand the place of preparation. Most people... Um, don't prepare for anything and they just feel they can just walk. You see, when David was about to die, <laughs> one of the success that Solomon enjoyed in his life was because David prepared for death. First Chronicles 22, I believe verse 5, he said, David prepared abundantly before his death. So all of the wealth we saw that Solomon began to enjoy in his life that he stumbled into. Solomon was already wealthy. He only used and maximized what his father left behind to make him extra wealthy. He stumbled into wealth. Why? Because the father prepared. Most of the mistakes or some of the sufferings in our life today as young people are because our parents were not prepared. If your father was prepared before he brought you into this world, you would enter into wealth. But he wasn't prepared. For those who were not prepared anyway. So you cannot, you may come out of a bad home, but a bad home must not come out of you. Are you following me? You may come out of a bad home, but a bad home must not come out of you. You can't say because, oh, that's how my, 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 my parents, you know, left the, the, their life and lived their life, so it is what's my business. No. It should be a challenge to you. Are you listening? Are you listening to me? One day I sat down and I was looking. I was just studying my Bible. I discovered that Adam, Adam, Adam didn't fail in business because when God said to Adam, keep the garden, Adam kept it well. Are you aware? Adam didn't fail in spirituality. Adam was so close to God that God would come down in the cool of the day with Adam. True of us, Adam failed in marriage. So I sat back. I discovered that the problem we have today is because Adam failed in marriage. And the reason Adam failed in marriage was because he failed in something which we are going to talk about. So I discover if I succeed where Adam succeed, where Adam failed rather, I succeed in the angles where Adam failed, then the curse that was on Adam, I escape it. So it's deliberate. There are reasons. You don't just, you know, there are people that just think that, the people think that marriage is a trophy. They think marriage is a reward. Hey, let me just marry, I can rest. I pity you. Marriage is an assignment. Marriage is not a trophy. All my friends are married. Did, 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 did. All my friends are married. Many want to get married because their friends are married. As a young man, as a young lady in your life, never live your life based on external validation. External validation. People, you must do what people do for you to feel you are okay. And if you live like that, you are going to suffer. There are people today who are on social media. When they see somebody have something, they feel like dying because they don't have it. They'll do everything to have it. It's like competition. And such people can never be satisfied. If you're in a relationship with somebody who needs external validation, you will spend your life and spend your blood. They see a new phone, they're okay until they hear their friend has it. They want to have it. Such people are never satisfied. Because the Bible says, wealth, Proverbs 23 verse 5, He says it takes wings and flies away. Riches flies away. You can never catch up with it. And that's why you need counsel, you need wisdom. Joseph was preaching this morning and talking on purpose. And there's something you must know also. It's important that you know that. Purpose needs counsel. No matter the purpose you have in life, if you don't have enough counsel, you, have a, you will misfire even with a genuine purpose. Amen. 
So we need to have an understanding. Proverbs 5.22, he said, without counsel, purposes are disappointed. So you need to understand. One of the reasons, you know one of the reasons why Adam failed? There was no courtship at all. Adam and Eve had no courtship. I will explain all of that. So when you have a wrong reason from getting married, there are reasons why we get married. There are reasons why marriage is initiated. Marriage is initiated for, number one, for companionship. I'll just run through that. That's not my main, let me just give you this as a bonus. Marriage is initiated for companionship. You get married because when you have a wrong reason to get married, even in the marriage, you feel empty. And that's why there are some people that are married, but they are living single. Companionship. You need somebody to constantly talk to. Now, all of us went through this isolation that happened recently because of the pandemic. True? It got to a point you felt like dying. Is that correct? Am I correct? You were frustrated. Is that true? But the, those who are married may not have felt it. Part of the reason why some of you were frustrated is because, in fact, when, when they say somebody is under arrest, what they are saying is that you will be isolated. Isolation is a punishment. Most of these big rich men that you see that are isolated, if you know where they are keeping them, it's like a hotel room. There is bed, there is air condition, no TV, to, to disconnect them from information. And these are men that daily, they read newspapers, they watch news, so they take that thing off. They, they demoralize them mentally. They don't torture most of them. It's like a vacation. And that's why the wrong group of people to arrest are pastors. Don't arrest the pastor. If you arrest the pastor, you are helping him to wait on the Lord. No, it's true. Don't arrest the pastor. Recently, I stayed two weeks. I didn't see the sun. Was that not personal arrest? You now say you want to arrest me. I will just walk into it gradually so I can rest. Pray. Just give me my Bible. Pray. It's very wrong to arrest the pastor. Because we arrest ourselves every day. <laughs> so, it's for companionship. So you can have a friend. You can have... Man was created to relate. Man is a relational being. Man is a relational being. It's important. And the reason for marriage, you're, you're married for compliment, to compliment each other. Where your strength is, where the person's weakness is, you compliment. There are things about you that you need somebody to compliment you. I got married because I need compliments. And those are the things I was looking for. And that compliment, I need somebody whose strength is my weakness, who my weakness is a strength, so we can compliment it. For example, I like to play. Me, as I did so. I like to play. I don't like serious things. If you are too serious, I won't like you. I'm not joking. I like to play. My children, when they walk into my room, they just start laughing before I say anything. Look, I must do one thing that will make them laugh and fall down. I like to play. So it's wrong for me to marry somebody who also likes to play or else two of us will be idiots. <laughs> no, but it's the truth. I like to joke. If you watch my messages, you understand what I'm saying. A man, a man, a soldier told me, he just watched my message to laugh. He said, does he, he's a Muslim. He said, does he just watch it to laugh? And I said to him, really? He said, yes. Every Sunday, I just watch you to laugh. I tell my wife, I want to be happy. So I just own you. And I start laughing. Now, I don't go to the pulpit prepared to make people laugh. It's just who I am. So, I knew if I marry somebody who likes also to laugh all the time, two of our house would be very miserable. Fools. Two fools. So, I needed somebody who will like laughter, but be serious. Everybody knows, if you want to send me a video, it better be a joke. Don't send me a video of who I want to end and all that. I will forward it back. I like video of joke. Just let me laugh. If I forward that video to my wife, she will ask me why. She doesn't see why I'm, my wife is serious. She likes to receive the joke, but not to give the joke. If my wife, sent, if my wife has sent me a hundred videos, maybe only two are jokes, the rest are serious. Health. Health. Health matter. Why you must take water regularly? Once you have crossed, <laughs> once you have crossed so, so, once you have crossed so, so age, some things you must not do. Why some men don't live long? Those kind of video. When she sends to me, I reply, her, "Oh, die, na die." <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying? She will tell me you can never be serious. I said, "You married me like that." So 
I needed somebody who also, sometimes, because sometimes when you, are, when you are too playful, it can become a problem. Yeah, so you need somebody who can curb your excesses. Are you listening? It's important. So you look at the areas of your life where it appears you are weak. Some, you, you can't be weak and marry somebody who is weaker than you are. That's where compliment comes in. So, okay. <laughs> Third reason people get married is for procreation. Procreation. So that you can bump a king. <laughs> you get married for procreation. Procreation. Do you know the joy when you see something that looks like you? There's this fulfillment. Not just looks like you, that behaves like you. My son is a very unserious person. I don't beat him because I'm seeing myself. <laughs> ah, sometimes in the midst of morning devotion, you come and ask me very annoying question that will just take me out of the spirit. <laughs> well, I have a devotion one day. came to me. I was just praying. He whispered in my ear, Daddy, can you perceive something? Somebody mess. Who mess? I was praying. I was praying. I said, hey, hey, I don't burn. I don't burn. I don't burn. I don't burn. That is exactly what I can do. So I don't flog him. The mother will say, look at you, just like your father. My papa burned me, just like your father. <laughs> so, so sometimes I don't even get angry. I don't. Most times he's restless. If I'm receiving a phone call, me, I'll walk from the end of that room. Some of you are like that, right? I'll walk, so when I'm receiving a phone call, what my wife does, she remove load. If I'm receiving a phone call, she'll remove everything in front of me. As I'm, I say, you see, what you are going to do, I'm walking, I'm restless. I see my son, if he's talking to me, he will bounce here, he will bounce, I say, oh, I don't burn, I don't burn. <laughs> so, <laughs> when you see, when you see in nature, it's just fun. Okay? For procreation and also procreation is important because god said be fruitful when you procreate legally when you procreate you are obeying a divine instruction multiply and what replenish the earth so that's another reason why we get married we get married because of that we also get married for bodily pleasure bodily pleasure if you think you are enjoying sex outside marriage wait till you get married sex is not this nonsense you are doing i'm going to explain all of that it's not the copulation of just bodily contact. Sometimes you need just to rest your head on somebody. Sometimes you just need someone to hold your hand. That's the bodily pleasure. Sometimes you just need a right lap to put your head. Not Delilah. A right lap. <laughs> I preach a message in the minister's conference. Delilah's lap, a barber shop. So you need that. You need that. So all of those were reasons why people get married. But now we're going to see. Why is it that some of these marriages fail? You see, you can never correct a building from the roof. You correct it from where? Talk to me. From where? So if you want to correct a building, you correct it from the foundation. So where people have a problem is that the foundation is wrong. Amen. Marriage is also, you know, you get married, married for covenant, covenant forever, forever. Everybody will leave you one day. That your partner will not leave you. When there was no service here, everybody was at home. Some of you during the lockdown, your mother and your father were together. Or if you're already in a relationship, you're married and you're in the crowd, you're with your partner. So, a covenant, marriage is a covenant. But why do we have people who get married today and there's a problem? Because when people think that this thing is about looks and about beauty, it's nonsense. It's nonsense. Proverbs 31 verse 30, favor is deceitful, beauty is vain. But the woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Favor is deceitful. Beauty is vain. Favor. Another word for favor is charm. Charisma. The word for favor there. Charisma. Courage. When a person is well built, they say the person is well favored. Okay, can you get the um, message translation or maybe the amplified so that? Charm. Did you see that? Did you see that? Charm. There are some people that are not beautiful, but they, 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 are, they have this charm. 
there are some ladies if they walk in here they they are they are head turners you say oh, oh charm it can mislead that's what they say charm can mislead beauty soon fades the woman to be admired and praised is the woman who lives in the fear of god because all of that i have never seen any marriage break and i ask them why did they break my wife is no more fine my husband is not ugly no i don't like her character she doesn't respect me she does this so it is beyond the beauty are you following what i'm saying that's why you be deceived. Some, some the bible said the woman that fears god her price is more than rubies some of you think it's about money if you are a lady who has a pride tag, you must get a bad buyer if you are a lady who has a price tag you will get a bad buyer if money is your motivating factor there are people ready to buy you they have the money they will buy you and they will make sure they treat you like a commodity if money is what moves there are people it's money and that's why women if there's any group of a class of people that needs to be careful about relationship is ladies that's the truth you have to be very careful even at 80 a man can marry true but a woman cannot so she has to get it right in fact god created relationship more for women than men that's the truth okay when god created adam the first thing god gave adam was work the first thing god gave eve was adam So women are more relational so you have to get it a woman's a woman's happiness is based on her emotional satisfaction let her get a job let her get it if emotionally she's not happy you know a man can be frustrated emotionally and still smile and do well <laughs> he will smile and do well he's beating his wife he woke up in the morning hey what's up <laughs> but a woman left home she's sad because of what her husband did throughout that day Amen. No, it's okay. It's fine. <laughs> they keep changing phone. They are, they are avoiding coronavirus. <laughs> it's fine. It's okay. Amen. So, any woman that is emotional, and that's why women are very, women are smarter emotionally. Let me say this to you as a young man. If you are asking a girl out, and she say, give me time, two months, three months, leave her. She doesn't like you. Just leave her. women listen women are fast to process let me give an example let me give an example no the, can i talk wait 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 a lady processes faster than a man so if you take her months she has not answered you she doesn't like you she's waiting for an alternative if a better person come or not she will now, if nobody now comes she can now know she puts you somewhere if a lady enters here now if a man enters here now, the first thing you see, Apostle is preaching. Hey, that's a guy. Apostle is feeling the entire now. She look at the pillar. She look at the color. She look at the chairs. So she look, she will give you details. Cha, that church is okay. But what about the choir? That color of robe the choir was wearing does not fit the women. Am I correct? Uh -huh. Because what Apostle was preaching, do you notice there was one girl on the side that was just chewing gum? Taco, 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 taco. You know? Uh -huh. And the man he said, How, how? They see a lot of things. If a lady enters and she sees four men, she already knows the one that wants her. And he and God and she knows the one she wants. God help you. If you are not the one she wants, you come away. Your answer, she has kept it, or she's waiting for you. You are looking at her, looking at her. She knows you are looking at her. She pretends. You know, men are like fools. If a man wants a lady, even in public, that you go to look up. If a lady wants a man, she can be looking here, but she's seen him. <laughs> oh, 
No, let's let's talk. Sit down. No, she will never let you. No, 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 no. She's seen him, but she won't let him know. That's how she's wired. They observe. They notice a lot of things. That's why if you're a liar and you're in a relationship, you're finished though. You say something, you say on that one. She said, hmm. Now, wow. You say, what is it? No, nothing. Nothing. She can tell you what you said. You forgot. That's the truth. If a woman, if a woman is in love, if she loves, in fact, the most frustrated person to ask out is a lady that is in love. You hate your life. What is your name? I have a man. I mean, give me your number. I say I have a man. You, if he loves the man, you are, you are, you, if you are finished, he said, sorry, can we talk? I have a man. <laughs> That's the truth. If, he loves, if the woman loves, she's in love. But a man is built. A man can love a woman crazily and stitch it. Cra he can love her crazily. Now, a woman, listen to this. That's why it's easy to catch a man. Very easy. You marry a man, to catch him is very easy. Yeah, when he's cheating, you see him. He starts hiding his phone. If we have a password and password that password. There are, some, there are some men you can never know their password. You are joking. Put the date of your birth. Put your name. Put everything a lie. He saved it with Ogbolo. <laughs> That's the password. The password is a goosey. You, you'll be wondering. You put your name. You put date of birth. You put his name. Put his mother's name. Never. And you know there's a level you put the password and there's going to be a problem. You could, you could block the line. He will put what you will never remember. Never. Akamu. You will, you will try. But a lady can be dating five men. You won't know. No, because they are wired to be diverse. A man, if a man is watching football, he's watching football. He's watching football. But a lady can be watching TV and have something on the fire. The same time be plating a child's hair. The same time be washing. They can do many things at the same time. They can date many men at the same time. Not started though. Can I? Are you sure you want to hear? So if a, if you have a lady that is faithful to you, kneel down, thank God. Okay, let's close now. I have not even started. You are shouting. So they are wired that way to catch a man very easy. I, I gathered some women in our church and I was telling them how to catch a man, how to catch a cheating man. They laugh and they fell down. As it's easy, it's very easy. You just see his attention. Wham! It's off the home. When your father was about to marry a second wife, those of you from polygamous home, you just notice at a point, he stopped caring. Uh -huh, it's easy. A, a sister, <laughs> oh God. A lady can be worshipping her God. Lift her hands, worshipping her God. And she's planning to go to a man's place at the end of the service. She will lead praise and worship well. <laughs> you don't know, women, a, are, I will tell you they are good part. They are good though. They are good. I want to tell you the good part of it. So it's important. Number one, if you want to have a proper future, understand friendship. Understand what? And I'm going to tell you how many of you have a problem. Understand friend, friendship. There are people today who enter into relationship of dating without friendship. A guy has come to you, a guy comes to you and says, I like you, blah, 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 the days, the days, I want us to be together, I want to be my girl. Mm -mm, not so fast. Let's be friends. 99% of the relationship of, 20, of this century starts with relationship. No, it should begin first with friendship. Friendship without benefit, not even hug. Let's know ourselves. If this is what I can cope with. Today, once they approach a girl, that very day he said, I want to be my girl. Now, so they fast. You must be friends first. Because a time comes when everything fails in marriage. It's that friendship that keeps you. It's in friendship you check. A guy who asks you out today, the next day, call you 21 times at night. Were, oh, were, oh, Lord, buruku. He doesn't have work. Tell him don't. And when it's friendship, give condition. Don't choke me. Don't call me it's excessively. Friendship. French, and that doesn't happen these days anymore. A guy, a lady meets a guy and sleeps with the guy that day. Okay. That day. I 
and you are wondering why he has no respect for you you are wondering why he doesn't treat you right because you he's not going to marry you because he's, he's thinking hold on how do i say this to you have you seen people who say to you they just see you first they say i love you if you can call police call police for him you can't love they say they say love at first sight that's rubbish you can be attracted as fourth sight but you cannot love at first sight you can't because many of you think love is a feeling that the way the way they do me in fact the way they do me the way i can't stay if i have discovered the more stupid you are the more people think you are in love we live in a generation where this generation rewards madness madness this generation compliments insanity the most stupid a boy is following a girl they say see love he's going on the road and now kneel down and say please they say ah see love is it, is it that kind of foolishness that's not love love is not a feeling love is not how you feel should i tell you what love is first corinthians 13 verse 4 let's see what love is first corinthians 13 verse 4 first corinthians 13 verse 4 bring it up charity no charity there means love charity suffereth what long charity and is what this is what love look at definition of love those of you that think that love is goosebumps when i just saw her, my body my body started, started shaking 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 my body was shaking Ooh. you are sick see a doctor you are not you're not in love with nothing charity suffered long charity is kind so if you want to say you love somebody does he have capacity to bear your childishness does she have capacity to bear your weakness and excesses charity is kind is he kind charity envied not is he envious charity vaunted not itself is not puffed up is he arrogant i'm telling you what love is so if somebody walks to you and say i don't know why i love you very soon he won't know why i will leave you if you ask somebody why do you love me he say i don't know why please he doesn't love you because if he really loves you there are reasons for it bring bring verse five i'm helping somebody right does not behave itself unseemly seek it not her own it's not easily provoked think it no evil verse seven verse six rejects not not in iniquity but rejects it in the truth verse seven bear it all things believe it all things and hope Hope at all things and yours all things. So love has to be premised on something. Love has to have a platform. Because when you get married, all of those feelings, if why you love a girl is because of the way she is carved, because of the way she is built. When she has one or two children, her shape will change. That thing you are seeing now as a girl, it will change. Her stomach will not become out. Everything will change. And even when she goes and does a surgery and do all of those things they do, the character cannot be surgically operated on. That's what you're going to live on. That's what you will live on. That thing. That's why you must start that friendship. And that's why most of us have a problem. No friendship. You meet somebody today, the next thing is already sending you emojis of kisses. Forward it back to him. We are not, we are not dating. We are just friends. Don't go there. You have to know. As a father, it's very important that I tell you things, no matter how private they are. But if they will help you, I'll tell you. When I was a resident pastor in Lagos, there was a girl. She was so beautiful. Chai, people fine, no. She was so fine. And she was a medical doctor. So, I know get she, she. She had three cars. I didn't have a dime. I was her resident pastor. And she would buy me gifts. Shoes. Suits. When somebody starts doing that, he's already telling you, my friend, talk now. What are you waiting for? Say something. So I was collecting, but I was careful. One day I called and I sat her down. I said, please, I need to know why you are doing all this. He said, you know. She said, you know. I said, I don't know. He said, you know. I said, I don't know. He said, eh, eh, you want me to say, you know. Okay, tell me you don't love me. I said, no, I don't. No, women don't like that. That's why they get deceived. Every woman that wants to succeed in life must open her ears, clean it to hear truth. There's a place of flattery. No, there's a, women are wired for compliments. That's the truth. The first thing Eve had in her life was compliment. 
this is the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh from that day women started loving compliments that's the first thing eve had when she came into this world compliments so women love compliments but in the midst of compliments say the truth for example if you're in a relationship and the girl is adding so much weight and she asks you am i fat don't say yes so don't say if you, no girl likes to hear that she's fat don't say yes and don't say no so you don't lie if you say ah am i adding too much weight uh -uh. who said that for what who said that am i adding too much weight uh -uh. who said that leave it like that just leave it like that <laughs> don't say ah if you see yourself how you look now she, you will demoralize her but don't say she's not or she's not going to learn how to stay away from food so just put it in between ah, who say you are fat is the person mad why would they say you are fat answer me am i fat ah, ah. why would they say you are fat don't say yes don't say no <laughs> so what i did i sat her down i said see 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 now physically it was, I said, this person, by the time as a man of God, I put her in front. I'm entering the church. Oh. But I said, I need to know if it is something I can stay in the same house with. Because when you start living with somebody, there are times she's going to wake up in the morning. She has not made up. You see her in a raw form. Raw gold. Raw. With all the cigarettes. And all the with everything what keeps you in all of those days is that friendship so we have and that's how we have relationship that today are broken the man say I'm done the woman say I'm done I don't want anymore is because they got into marriage but they did not build it on friendship they started dating on the spot so if somebody really wants to get involved in your life the person has to first be your and it's in the place of friendship you now decide if you can date him or date her but the reason you are confused is because even in the place of friendship is already touching you so you, you now feel obligated that you, this one that is touching me i have to date him more or else let me go lose at the end because you think that men are going out of fashion so you cannot walk with your dignity high it has to be friendship first i made sure that while we were doing all of those talk and all that there was no body contact so when i was saying i can't i was doing that with confidence but there was a problem when i said i could not all the suit she bought me she said you will return it all that's even good because it's returnable there was one i could not return the food because she's coming back from work i'm in the church office you know i was a resident pastor like pastor yaro is and if you know the resident pastor actually knows what's going on in the church than the head pastor okay so all oh, this is passing by she will bake she bakes a lot cake no fish pie if you see me i was looking fresh i was eating she now said all oh, the suits i gathered them i brought it shoes I gathered them. In fact, there was one that I, I gave to a brother, and I had to go and call him. He said, ah, did you don't cut? Oh, you don't cut. I said, so am. <laughs> so we got it out, and I gave everything. And he said, okay. The next day, he said, what? I was, I was shocked. The next day, he said, okay. You need to send the food. I gave you women. Women are accountants. I baked for you 22 times. I gave you takeaway I bought seven times. I gave you two Sprite Orobo. I gave you one Orobo Pepsi. Come and see when she was released. I said, yeah. So I told my friend, he said, oh, well, you go run no. How do we pay these things back? That was when we started negotiating. I started begging. And I asked my friend, I said, what if I had gone into this kind of thing? But that was all. When she said she was going to talk to my pastor, I was confident. If there was something extra I did with her, I'll be scared. I was confident. And in fact, I wanted her to talk to my pastor because my pastor ate from the food. As they gave me, I gave daddy some. Daddy chopped some. He drink Pepsi. So I was really happy. <laughs> my daddy was an accessory to crime. <laughs> so I was, I was confident. 
And that is where we have a problem. We, we miss that. When you have that understanding of the place of friendship before dating. Hello? Are you now getting where you miss something? Are you getting where you miss something? That is when you make a decision. Is this somebody I want to have a relationship with? Praise the Lord. Talk to me. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Some, sometimes when you, actually, when you actually think, you know, some people actually think that when a lady or a man is with you, it actually means you are the only thing that matters to them. Sometimes they can keep you while they are expecting the best. That's why I say you must understand friendship. Somebody met, so I've, to, I've said this before in church, somebody met a, 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 a girl and told the girl, he said, you know I love you. He said, yes. He said, I know Emeka is chasing you. He said, who is Emeka? He said, I thought you knew Emeka. He said, no. He said, okay. Emeka is rich, oh, but me, I love you. Emeka has a house, oh, but me, I love you. Emeka has a car, but me, I love you. Emeka can take care of a woman, but me, I love you. And the girl said, if you really love me, introduce me to Emeka. <laughs> she said, Emeka has a car, Emeka has a house, Emeka can take care of a woman. Please, if you really love me, introduce me to Emeka. Because Emeka is better than you. And the guy's heart was broken. So, friendship. And that's what, that's what keeps you going. People wonder why Mama and I, we play and the rest. When I got, I approached Mama for marriage. For one year, we didn't see. We were talking with letters. Sometimes we were talking with phone. In the same country. She was in Lagos. I was everywhere. I only know where I sleep. I don't know where I wake up. I was everywhere. I was an evangelist. I was um, preach here today, travel here tomorrow, preach here tomorrow, travel. So, but we are communicating. We are talking. I was looking for something. So, the first two times I saw her, I gave. I went to her house. Saw her mom. Those people that can see your family are not ready. That's the truth. He doesn't know your mom. He doesn't know any member of your family. You are dating a SIM card. Because the day he changed his number, relationship is over. He refused. I talked to my mom. No, 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 no. Ah, hold on for my brother. No, 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 no. So, first thing I did, I gave her money to keep. I'm very bad with money. That's why I talk about comments. I'm very bad. Very bad. If you give me money now, it will, the money will get exhausted when I'm sitting down. But my wife, if you give her money, <laughs> she's a giver, but she doesn't believe in giving that doesn't make sense. Me, I give like a fool. I mean, I can even give to a rich person. Somebody can have a car now. See that they don't have fuel. I can just count 100,000. See, buy fuel. My wife says, Come, how much is the filling station? <laughs> what are you doing? Give him 5,000. Do you understand? I can just, oh, what is the matter? She says, okay, take. She said, no, give, but not like that. So I needed to test that. I gave her the money. I arranged the money well. I wrote in some of the denominations. I was just trying to see if she was going to count it. The way I gave was the way I met it two months later. I said, okay, number one test. We are still friends, so... It sounds strange. Because some of you are too impatient. If my papa is saying somebody will be a friend, somebody will be a friend, somebody will be a friend. If somebody is now a friend for like six months, one year, how long somebody will now date before somebody will now marry? This friend, I beg, I beg, I beg. It's God that knows. The man that is good is good. The one that is bad is bad. What is it? Because you are too, imp <laughs> you are too impatient. Number two. <laughs> Number two. Are you get, getting blessed? Number two. What is number one? What is number one? What is number one? Amen. Number one, you understand friendship. And number two, understand relationship is not for fun. Relationship is not for fun. 
relationship is not for fun you've got to be ready you've got to be matured you don't enter relationship because your friends are in relationship no you enter relationship because you are ready for it songs of solomon chapter 2 verse 7 songs of solomon chapter 3 verse 5 chapter 8 verse 4 he said don't stir up love until it pleases songs of solomon 2 7 bring it up i charge you daughters of jerusalem by the rose and the hymns of the feet that you stir up no awake my love till he please three five eight four also meaning do not start it until you are ready for it some people think that oh the reason that um, you're in a relationship because you feel that everybody's going to i'm the only one who doesn't have a man when they are calling their man part of the reason why that relationship in lagos i didn't get into it was at that point in my life i had too many issues in my life i was having issue with my father i had not seen my mother for a while so it was not a good time emotionally for me to add to my stress because relationship is stressful you don't get into it until you are sure you have extra time you can't come back from work very tired you know work eight till about 9 p.m you now get up by nine to rest one you might be telling you i'm calling you you pick my car you are going to give back you are going to give out a bad energy are you following me so he said you have to understand it's not for fun you have to be ready for it you have to be ready for it you have to be ready to take a lot of nonsense because relationship comes to a lot of nonsense there are some young men that are just a handful you're on the phone for a while they ask you who are you talking to that's nonsense you shouldn't go through that nonsense you don't deserve a husband's honor on a boyfriend's commitment. You don't des de deserve a husband's honor on a boyfriend's commitment. You don't deserve a wifely treatment on a boyfriend's commitment, on a girlfriend's commitment. You are not married to somebody and he's going through your phone. What nonsense. How dare he? He has no right to go through your phone. Why are you going through, why are you going through the phone? And some of you are now so imprisoning yourself. You say, bring your phone i say come 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 <laughs> come <laughs> come Whew. stand here i may stand inside this circle drop the phone say please now please now walk out on him tell him to hell with you you have no right but you know why you can't walk out on him? He has slept with you. If he has not done that, there's this pride to hell with you. Now, even in marriage, you don't go through. I don't go through my wife's phone. I don't go through my wife's phone. She doesn't go through my phone, but our children go through our phones. <laughs> there are things I didn't know on my phone. My daughter brought it out. I said, yeah. Man, they just bring it out. Bam! Titi, your phone. Yeah. Don't even know how to use it. Yeah, daddy, come bring your head. That's what are you doing? See, we're snapping. Oh, daddy, don't do like you are praying. Smile, smile. <laughs> <laughs> so you do not. There are so many people. They do. What time do you? What time? If you see a, two people dating, when they are judging, you are wondering if they are married. What time did you enter the house? What time? Liar, liar, liar. What time? God knows I came by 10. Liar! By 10, I was at your door. I was at your door. Where did you go? Liar! God knows. God knows. God knows. God Torment. And you are there. And the girl is almost harassing your life. Because of the suspicion that she has. He said, when you, when you just pass, Neka did the eye one kind. It's like you did the eye at your Swati Neka. Two of you wink at each other. Both of you think I'm a fool she has issues with herself she has trust issues and she puts you under that kind of pressure you don't need it you tell them when you are tired of your stupid suspicion if you want this relationship to continue it continues as a young boy look at you see your neck that's why you come long you never marry your neck don't long like angolo you look like giraffe or your shoulder look like somebody with shoulder pad that's how you're going because of relationship 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 you are not in relationship you are in situationship situationship <laughs> you are in situationship 
So there are some people who are not in relationship, they are in what? Situationship. <laughs> Once you are getting, you are losing your peace, you are getting unhappy, stage a walk and get out of it. Are you ready? That's what you ask yourself. If you see one of the one of the um, scriptures or the references most people who teach on relationship do is Genesis 24 from verse 12 when um, Abraham sent his servant to go get Isaac a wife. You see all the process? He prayed. That's one of the signs to show that you are ready. He first of all prayed. We cannot do this thing with all I'm going to teach you. We cannot do them without prayer. From verse 12 down to verse 20, 22, 25 you will see the process of how the man prayed. He said, I pray this day. You cannot begin the process of a relationship without prayer. If you like him, you like him as a friend, you now pray, Lord, can I be, the, can I be with this person? You can't without prayer. There's no matter what I teach you, you can't without prayer. And, and the servant of Abraham said, as I go out, direct me. Who am I going to meet? Who am I going to talk to? Come, baby, come, come, come. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Am I blessing you? Am I blessing you? You must ask yourself, Are you prepared for this? Is this the kind of relationship you want? Are you set? Are you ready? You know, hold on, hold on, look here. How many of you know <laughs> there's a scripture that they've used over the years to look at me? You are looking at my wife. Look at me. There is, there is a scripture people have used that has confused a lot of them over the years. That's 1 Timothy 5, verse 8. Hmm? That's confused a lot of people. 1 Timothy 5, 8 has confused a lot of people. Bring it up. If any man provide not for his house, especially for those of his own house, he has denied the faith and is worse than infidel. They used it to insult a lot of husbands. Look at you. Look at you, shameless man. Even the Bible say, if a man cannot provide, is that true? Eh? Can we see it in the NIV version? NIV. NIV. If anyone, that scripture was not just for a man. Before you read the scripture, you must check the preceding scripture. It was talking of how to treat widows. Are you listening? A woman has to play a complementary role. You must ask yourself, are you prepared for this? Are you ready for it? Abraham's servant said, this person that shall come out. In other words, one of the signs to know you are, you are ready for a relationship is make yourself visible. You can't be believing God for a future partner and your profile page on WhatsApp is Buari and Osiba just picture. Are you mad? Your profile page is the name the Aziki way that is late. Or you put the map of Nigeria. What is wrong with you? Be visible. Look for your best pictures. Put them on your profile. Somebody will be scrolling through. He see one. He keep quiet. The next day you have changed it. You see another. He keep quiet. The father is here. Ah, he sends you a DM. Hello. Be visible. Settle down. Take pictures. Say for what? For my profile page. Ah, ah. Are you serious? Say yes. Brand yourself well on the internet. No, you just wake up with all stupid. You tied up on your chest. Is not doing Snapchat. Just waking up. Ah, ah, just waking up. Ah, ah. And somebody actually thought you were a, a, a responsible person and he saw you in your waking up stage. You know that waking up mood? <laughs> be visible. Be in a department. Join a department. Let's see you. Join a department. Join the youth meeting. How can you not be in the youth meeting and you want to marry? Youth meeting, that is where people are believing God for people. You don't come, you are not visible, we don't know you, we don't know anything about you, you don't appear, where did they worry you? There are brothers who come, there are brothers who have given wives in this ministry. Their brothers have endorsed their wives. 
almost 90% of our pastors. There are people they brought to me. I said, I just kept, I didn't see anything. They are not visible. From the top down. If there's any down, anyway. Are you following me? Reverend Fidelis got married. I knew the wife before he got married. When he brought her to me, I said, if you leave this girl, I'll kill you. Because she was always coming to me for prayers. Reverend Kisley, I knew the wife before he got married. Pastor Azemi, I knew the wife before he got In fact, the wife was dancing a lot. Dancing, dancing, dancing all the time. She wasn't dancing for her husband. She was just loving God. She would dance. I was looking at her. When he pointed, I said, you don't get a wife. You don't. I mean, they are happy. They are happy now. Because the wife is visible. That's your stupid profile picture. That is showing agri agriculture. That is showing corn and showing yam. If I see it again, be visible. You see, I'm not a. I, I'm, this is me. I'm going to tell you as it is. Somebody wanted to show me a video. Wanted to show me something on um, on a phone. She was trying to show me a music. I said, "Bring it." She just wanted to send it. To, I said, "No, just let me watch it." The, the um, music went off, and a profile picture came out. I was shocked. I saw, you know, this um, this. There's one picture, green, white, green, where they wrote "Ensas." Somebody like somebody was injured. That's what I saw in a profile picture. I said, "What is this?" He says, "My profile picture." I said, Nidam, I would have flogged you if I was Reverend King. <laughs> I said, change this nonsense now. I said, now, as I'm looking, be changing it. Guess what? Every picture was useless. And that one should be like this. And that one. <laughs> Make our prayer accessible. We are praying. What is this? This Rebecca came out. It's not for fun. Are you sure you are ready? Another proof to show that you are ready, you must be hard working. Rebecca gave 10 camels water to drink. You are too lazy. You can't wake up on your own now and you are believing God for marriage when a child, before 3 a.m., a child is knocking on your door, drawing your leg. Your husband wants to talk to you. And if you are married, a husband that likes food, he will wake you 3 a.m. to pound the arm. Are too lazy you enter some girls their own house is an eyesore it's smelling some of them will wash cloth in the morning and iron it that same morning when you hear when you, when you hear they hear somebody's coming that's when they start running to clean it's a pit their house is like a pit you are surprised why anytime you're talking to that brother it will give you a mint a sweet. He'll give you a sweet. Your mouth is smelling. That's what he's saying. He'll give you sweet. He'll give you sweet. You are talking to him. He gives you. Say, please take this. He says, oh, thank you. My brand of sweet. It's not brand. Oh, we are. Oh, we are. Your mouth is smelling. <laughs> Let me round up. It's like somebody's getting sad. <laughs> Glory to God. Tell somebody on your left and right. Make yourself visible. I can't hear you. You see, most times, most times, listen to this. Let me tell you one mistake people make. Let me tell you something. <laughs> most times, people have the kind of man they are praying for to get married. I mean, I mean, if you know it's true. Forgetting that man has also the kind of lady. I ask you a question. Are you the person you are praying for, also praying for? Are you the person you are praying for? Oh, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. You are a girl. You go to a club. You dance. You spend all your time with different men. You stand on the, on the road and men sleep with you. They give you money. And at the end of the day, you are praying for one man that has never known any lady. That is so nice. Let me ask you. If you are God, you, you. If you are God, will you answer that prayer? You. If you are God, no, put, your, put yourself in the position of God. How will God give a good man a useless girl? No, think of it. That doesn't mean that bad girls don't marry good guys. They do. They do. But trust me, if the bad girl doesn't stop being bad, she will lose the good man. No, let me ask you a question. When he met, when he met 
with Rebecca, but the way Rebecca was taking care of the animals, he asked a question, whose daughter are you? Are you not ashamed? That somebody just came to church, we have pastored you, trained you, somebody came to church, just shine his teeth and flash his car, you followed him away. Whose daughter are you? Whose daughter are you? I know many people in this choir, in the crowd, the entire relationship, bah, I didn't see them again. Five years later, they came out with two children. Daddy, as if I see you near my office. You cannot, you cannot bring it. If a person wants, I told them in this church, a brother is asking you out and he's ready. Tell him to see me. Many cannot come and see me because I know them. And they know that me, I know them. And they're looking at me now because they know I know them. I said, tell him to, we know the brothers who have no approached sisters. We want to help you. You may not like it. I know somebody who left this church with a pastor. Why? One of our sisters, who is a gospel artist, he brought the girl to me. And I was okay. The next thing was with another one. I said, no, go walk home. They both left the ministry. I don't care. Someone else brought a girl to me and we were in the bathroom. Mama saw me one time in the room. I was abusing hell out of it. He brought the girl to me. After a while, I said, it's not marrying that one again. Once another one, I should give her proof. I said, tell that former girl to tell me that the relationship is over. He said, he can't. I said, okay, this one you cannot. You have destroyed that building. You want to enter another house? No. <laughs> Whose daughter are you? Do you know in those days when our father's marriage, their marriage stayed? Because they will investigate the family. All your father was said, give me the name. He said, the girl. He said go, you hear from us. He will enter the family. How many leprous people are in their family? How many Nwere is their family? How many Mumu is there? Is there a thief? Is there... By the time he investigates, he will tell you, you can't marry from them. Why? Because if there's leprosy in your family, you are likely to have one. If in your family they don't stay with a husband, you are likely to end up like that. So they'll just tell you, you can't marry. In those days. And in those days, there was no computer age. Marriage lasted and now that we are claiming we know too much. Divorce everywhere. Whose daughter are you? A pastor who prayed for you, covered you. Your biological parents who have been there, all of a sudden you elope with a boy because you feel he loves you more. Anyone that doesn't respect your covering has no value for you. A person you are in relationship with him and he said nasty things about your pastor, you cite the comment. Say, do you know I'm blocking you? I'm blocking you because of this rub you said about my pastor. I'm blocking you now. And if you call me again, you are in trouble. No. He's talking. He said, Wesha, Wesha. All men of God are not like that too. All men of God are not like that. Wesha, my pastor. It's not really like that too. He said, nice man. Are you serious? Whose daughter? 